So I'm not sure if I want to use the E word just yet, but could we call TJ Hawkinson elite? Maybe, maybe, I don't know. It, it, we're getting there. Let me know in the comments. Elite, not elite, because he's really, really good. Uh, he's probably the most underrated tight end in the NFL right now. Uh, maybe there's someone I'm forgetting because they're so underrated, even I forget about them. But he's incredible, and no one watched any Lions games last year because, I mean, why would you choose to watch a Lions game? That just sounds like a horrible experience. Sorry, that was mean. Lions fans, you know. I mean, last year. Last year was tough. This year, there's hope for uh, reason for optimism. I'm being nice to one of your players. Cut me, some, cut me a little bit of slack here. Uh, let's talk about TJ Hawkinson and how good he really is. Something like this is just something that is awesome that a tight end can do. So a lot of times you see tight ends, they can really excel in zone. That's a lot of what you see tight ends doing, and Hawkinson is no exception. But what's interesting is, so they put him out wide, but now he's coming back and he's going to be in motion, which again, you don't see too many tight ends doing that. Typically, this is a wide receiver kind of thing. He's going to be in motion pre-snap, and you see that there's the way this works is that zone coverage, you have a receiver who's lined up to the offense's left, kind of run over the middle. The hope is that he gets the Chicago player who's in charge of covering that middle section of the field all the way up to the top of the screen, just further down a little bit. And Hawkinson, because he's so fast, can kind of run over and get in that area. I know he ran a 4-7, which is still pretty good for a tight end. It's not anything crazy, but I swear his game speed is just different. He just gets places quicker. I, I know it's not like, I think I think Noah Fant like broke 4 or five, but that's the exception, not the rule. Uh, you know, not everyone is going to be one of these four, four tight ends. He's really quick at getting to his spot though. Watch how right when this play starts, I mean, watch how he just gets there in a hurry and he knows exactly where to go, knows the angle to get and picks up a good amount of yards. I mean, he gets to his spot quickly and that's what you want a tight end to do. Tight ends, oftentimes it comes down to where do you go in the offense, knowing exactly where to go and just getting there as quickly as you can in the receiving game. And that's what he's able to do and do it pretty well. And there's something like this. It's man coverage and you see where he is on the screen. So that's the route that he's going to be running on this play. Uh, and it's not going to necessarily be great right at the start. Like watch, right when this play starts, I mean, you know, contact, good defense right here. But again, part of what makes Hawkinson good is he's just a bigger guy. If you can box out people in the red zone like this, that's going to be effective. How many times have we seen Rob Gronkowski do, do it? You know, Mark Andrews for Baltimore, he's great at it. Hawkinson, 6'5", 250, and look at what he's able to do. He is able to box out and make that play. So again, he is in that spot where he's bigger than defensive backs and he's faster than a lot of linebackers. So uh, at least he can move a lot better than a lot of linebackers, if not a faster 40 times. So that's a you know, really good thing about his game. But let's get into some of the more fun stuff about his game. So like right here, for example, this is a great example of a scheme play where he kind of just gets schemed open. And to be honest, that is a decent amount amount about what a tight end does is there is a bit of getting schemed open. That's what's going to happen here. I mean, as you see how it works is it's zone coverage. And the way it's going to work is the play action will probably get Green Bay players to move further in. You have a go route to the offense's left that could push a defensive back deep, potentially even to safety deep, clear up space op over the middle for Hawkinson to get open. And as you see, right when this play starts, I mean, Hawkinson is certainly open right here. So, okay. So far, so good. Hawkinson's open. This part isn't the impressive part. Watch how this throw's going to be made, and look at how Hawkinson stays on his feet and picks up more yards. I love a tight end who can do that, and you know what? It seems like all the best tight ends, receiving-wise, can do stuff like that. You know, Travis Kelsey can do it. Uh, Rob Gronkowski can do it. Uh, it. That's just one of those things that it's really impressive when a guy can do. George Kittle, another guy, and he has that quality of his game. And the real best aspect is something like this. It's going to be his route running and footwork. That's the real way he's able to be effective in the passing game as a tight end. So on this play, it's going to be man coverage. And you see the route he's running. Nothing too you know spectacular here. Nothing too creative. And watch how right when this play starts. I mean, you see how he gets to the inside right there. So already, the player who's trying to cover him further behind right now because again Hawkinson he accelerates really quickly maybe that's what I should have said at the beginning is it's not necessarily speed it's more so acceleration it's those first couple of steps and really the first like 10 yards getting there very quickly because now when you're trying to defend him 
It's a little bit difficult to do that. But then watch this step, and he makes it way more difficult to do that. I don't know what you do right there to defend that. I mean, that's just such a great move. The fact that he could, you know, cut that well, again, at his size, where he accelerates so quickly, this is why he is one of the best receiving tight ends in the league. And I should be clear, uh, his blocking is great too. I'm more interested in like receiving. So that's why I'm mostly talking about that. But it, I could easily make a whole video on his incredible blocking. I've talked about that in the past though. So uh, his blocking was great last year as well. The receiving is what really blossomed this year. Like going back to acceleration, this play is just like, this should not be possible, <laughs> quite frankly, kind of thing. Or what's going to happen is that it's just a simple screen pass. Okay. So nothing too fancy. It's a tight end screen. Hawkinson, very good at tight end screens. He's going to just start off blocking. Eventually he quote unquote loses the blocking matchup, but it's intentional. You lose it. You run a couple steps out. Uh, quarterback throws you the ball. You run pickup yards. Very simple. We all know how it works. However, right when this play starts, it doesn't work out too, too well. I mean, Hawkinson, you know, the throw was a bit wide, so Hawkinson actually fell down making the catch, which, you know, I get I get why he did it. I think a lot of people would say, hey, maybe just let that one go because no reason making a diving catch five yards behind the line of scrimmage. That's not always the best thing you can do, but he goes up and he does that anyway. So now you're in a bit of a dilemma, right? Someone will probably run over and, you know, if not touch you down, probably at least tackle you immediately after. However, Hawkinson gets up and then runs by everybody and still gets a big gain and a first down on that one. I mean, I've heard of guys being great at accelerating from just standing up and not moving to then going quickly. I've never quite seen someone be a great at accelerating one starting from lying down. That's a new one to me. That's just, I think that kind of does go to show how well he can accelerate if he can do it that well, starting from a lying down position. Uh, you know, really good stuff from TJ Hawkinson. He's you know, clearly statistically a very good player. I know some of these plays might not be like as wowing as like when you see a wide receiver do really well. But I think part of the reason for that is just for a wide receiver, you kind of are downfield more and you get these more opportunities for a tight end. A lot of what people want you to do is beat zone and things of that nature. And he's really good at that. So again, there's not always a ton of highlight real level plays, but that's just because he's a tight end. When you watch honestly any great tight end, uh, you're not always going to see the biggest highlight real level plays, but these plays still matter and still rack up a ton of yards. You know, he had uh, a, a ton of yards last year, 723 yards for a second year tight end. That is crazy high. And you know, uh, 67 receptions as well. That's going to get it done. I think some people might be saying that, hey, the Lions are in trouble next year. Their number one receiver is going to be TJ Hawkinson, which, okay, yeah, that is a concern, but also TJ Hawkinson's pretty good. Like he's someone who uh, I know you don't want a tight end to be in that role, but if a tight end has to be, there's worse guys to have in that role than TJ Hawkinson. That's my opinion on the matter. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.